Let's go to Ankara and speak to the security analyst Morat Aslan. Morat, thank you very much for your time. What do you think the purpose of an attack on a Turkish observation post would be? The purpose, I think, should first be assessed pending if this attack was consciously employed or not. Because if it's consciously, that means regime wants to, you know, uh, just have Turkey to counter regime forces in the region. And that is exactly against the mood of Astana process, because Turkey is over there to observe the escalation zone as a, you know, be, uh, impartial force over there. Murat, but let's take the Turkish, the let's, uh, sorry, you carry on. Uh, exactly, this is a conscious attack, I believe, because we witnessed 35 rounds, which are exactly planned to hit Turkish outposts over there. That means it requires a targeting process and also shooting duration indicates a preparation for that. Which means we have to, we have to, you know, uh, search for the main orientation, motivation of regime forces. If Assad is not fully in charge of the own forces, that means it is also dangerous because the military can behave however they want in the region and it can lead to humanitarian disasters and also, you know, wider conflicts in it. Okay, so that's exactly the point, isn't it? Let's say the Turkish government has the line correct and it was indeed a deliberate attack. Could the reason for an attack on a Turkish observation post like this be to drive the Turkish military back into Turkish territory? Because for six weeks now, we've seen this intense bombardment of civilian areas around Idlib. And everybody is wondering, is this the beginning of the final battle for control of Idlib, which if the Syrian regime were to win that battle, it would then control all of its territory once again? No one's been able to assess. What do you believe? Is this the final battle? Well, as you remember, yesterday there was an agreement between Russia and Turkey to, you know, establish a ceasefire between regime and also military in Idlib, as you know. Then regime is just in between deciding on something. If regime is opposing Turkish presence over there, then why? Russia was insistent on ceasefire over there. Because we know that there are diplomatic bargainings and Syria must respect it. But what I believe is that, well, it's a natural cause for the re regime to have Turks evacuate Idlib, but it's impossible because Idlib is a location that Turkey cannot ignore because of the humanitarian situation over there. Turkey do not want to take two million refugees. Then Turkish soldier is a guarantee just to keep regime forces back and also preserve the current situation and establish a link with Russians to keep the Astana process. That's it. Astana process at the moment is not working. We know it. We talk about the de-escalation agreement, which was made two years ago, the demilitarized zone that was set up as a buffer to protect civilians in Idlib one year ago. And people are being killed. The Astana process is not working. When President Erdogan meets Vladimir Putin, he needs to impress upon the Russian president that if this agreement does not work, then there is no solution to the war in Syria, surely, because Idlib is critical to the humanitarian aspect of more than three million people. Where would those millions of people go? People are saying they're going to come to Turkey. Turkey already has 3.2 million Syrian refugees. It may have reached its maximum limit. What's the solution here for Idlib particularly? Well, the initial solution, I believe, is the self-control. Because in Idlib, we know that there are many groups and Turkey is the only actor they can, that can easily, you know, have all groups aligned with the established status quo. And other than that, we know the aspirations of Russians over there to secure their military bases and also regime to have a purified land in Syria, including Idlib. When you challenge this status quo and the current situation, that means you must be ready for the response. In the current situation, we know that HTS and the other military over there, moderate military, are ready to counteract. But it's Turkey who stopped them. 
what I believe is that, okay, there are challenges, but we must have passions for the political termination of the problem and also respect the other until the political process is achieved. Morat, thank you very much indeed. Uh, let's just explain the HTS as Hayat Tahrir Al Sham. Not everybody understands the acronyms as you do as a yeah. professional security analyst, and they are a recognized international terror organization. Morat Aslan, thanks again.